Hi there. I'm Megan from Jamunkey. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so John, what is it like getting to expand on such a beloved franchise like How to Train Your Dragons into a modern era for dragons and the Nine Realms? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it's I've I've been in the franchise for years. You know, I was on Race to the Edge, which was an early iteration show, and then Rescue Riders, which was a show for younger kids in the dragons world. And now I get to play in this playground of dragons in the modern world, which has just been completely exciting to uh, approach it from a place of character and how these modern day kids have modern day hopes and dreams. And how does meeting a, you know, a, a dragon and bonding with a dragon, how do their modern day hopes and dreams connect uh, with the dragons in, in similar ways and in different ways than the Viking kids did previously. So it's, it's been a lot of fun and it's been a, it's been an exciting adventure for all of, for all of us uh, creatives on the show, as well as for the characters that we're putting in the show. So I think that it's been, um, it's been really wonderful. So Marcus, as you mentioned before, your filmography, you've done a lot of animation as well as live action. Do you have a preference to being in the studio to, as opposed to being on a soundstage? Um, I think I, I honestly don't have a preference. Um, I will say that one thing that I love about animation is uh, being able to really just let it loose. You know, you can pull up, look in any way you want. And the only thing that matters is that you're really connected to the character and you're ready to deliver um, an experience uh, vocally, what, which is so important because, you know, you're kind of constrained by the fact that people can't see your face. They can't see your movements. So how do you portray that through your voice? And that's always an exciting challenge, um, something that I look forward to. And me being somebody who grew up watching a ton of anime and cartoons, like I, I take cues from all of my favorite shows and all my favorite movies and try to bring them into my work. Um, so it's it's like a dream come true for me uh, anytime I get to step into the voiceover booth. <laughs> so Marcus, you mentioned earlier about um, your character, D'Angelo, being a rule follower. And my 11 year old is a huge rule follower. So are there any things that you can think of in your life that you, know, you have in common with D'Angelo? Were you a rule follower growing up? Or were you someone who tested boundaries like some of the other crew did? Um, I just noticed that in the clips that I've seen, it seems like D'Angelo's like, no, we're gonna do this. And everyone else is, ah, we're all over the place. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of funny because now I feel like I'd relate myself to some of the other characters, but growing up, I definitely was a rule follower. Um, my parents always talk about how easy I was because I like always listen to whatever they said. Um, yeah, I, I think D'Angelo, I definitely relate even to the father-son relationship that D'Angelo has, kind of share that similarity with my dad um, growing up. But nowadays, I feel like I'm, I'd be more towards the Tom, like, nah, let's just go do it. Let's let's explore, you know what I mean? But um, growing up, definitely related to D'Angelo heavily. Your 11-year-old is probably very similar to me. <laughs> he really is. He keeps his yeah. friends in line. He keeps yeah. us in line. He says, well, you yeah. said this. You can't change your mind. This yeah, is exactly. Like, Great. You have an 11 year old checking your integrity. It's really good. Thank it's you. Good. We all need a moral compass. All That's right. right. That's yeah. right. Very important to have that. Yeah. How much did you learn about your care, about you playing this character, Marcos? Playing the Angelo ba ba Baker? <laughs> <laughs> I think honestly, it was it was really exciting because I've always been for most of my life, I've been a rule follower. Uh, I feel like recently I've been more excited to take risks and, and expand my horizons. But um, looking at D'Angelo um, and seeing his strict um, kind of behavior when it comes to making sure that he's keeping his friends in line and making sure that they're all doing the right things, um, it really opened my eyes to um, what a positive that can be and also how that can be a hindrance sometimes. Um, so uh, it's been very exciting to get to break the character down and, and, and break his relationships with Tom, June, Alex, his dad, just everybody. Um, and, and see how he re reacts to these different environmental stimulus, uh, stimuli. I don't know how you'd say that in a freaking in vocabulary correct way. I'm just making up words now. I but, think that, um, that was it. That was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. But, that was a good um, one. Yeah. <laughs> but There's I, a I, good one. <laughs> yeah. I think D'Angelo, uh, he's really opened my eyes to who I am as a person because um, we, we do share a lot of similarities, but um, 
also made me realize that um, there is, you know, Tom's made me realize that there's some, you know, excitement on the horizon, you know? Yeah. And for you, John, what did you learn about you doing this project? What did I learn about me? Yeah. Uh, I learned I could, I could live on a lot less sleep than I thought that I could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I've, I've, Ensemble action adventure uh, shows is my favorite thing to write, my favorite thing to produce. Um, it goes back to my early days uh, of my career. And so I just, every time I, I, I write or create or produce a new ensemble action adventure show, I learn new tricks and new, and new, new turns and, and new character stories. And so for me, it's just telling all of these varied character stories um, and doing it in, in different ways each week, I think is, is the exciting thing for me. All right, so this question's for both of you and it's kind of like a little fun one. Uh, so what would your ideal dragon look like and would he have any special abilities? Go for it, Marcus. Man, I think honestly, uh, I've always loved wyverns from um, like dragon mythology. So probably like a, a kind of a wyvern shape because I feel like they're very well uh, balanced when it comes to, I mean, they're a little bit more on the spindly side, but they're like, they're strong and fast. Um, and I think I love Thunder's abilities. Like, honestly, I think a wyvern with Thunder's abilities would be my ideal dragon. Yeah, and for me, my my Megan, my son asked me that question every night, which I think is <laughs> funny. And you know, and, and I used to just give him the same answers every night, and then I realized maybe he wants a different answer because why does he keep asking me? So so last night it was uh, my dragon's definitely going to have ice powers. So that's where I landed last night was an ice power dragon. Um, so that's what I will I'll pass on to you. Did it, did he accept your new new entry into that? <laughs> <laughs> until tonight and then it'll have to be something something yeah. else thanks